move it, move it. I like to move it, move it. You yeah, like to move it. I like to move it, move it. I like to move it, move it. I like to move it, move it. You yeah, like to move it. I like to move it, move it. I like to move it, move it. I like to move it, move it. You yeah, like to move it. I like to move it, move it. I like to. Since I have your attention now, let me introduce you to a familiar name and a familiar frame. This is the Ola S1 Pro if you didn't know it already and that is one of the features that the Move OS 2.0 update now offers. It's loud, there is no equalizer and I think it is unnecessary. Remember when that extra loud rickshaw used to pass by and the face that you used to make? Yep, I might make a similar one if I see an Ola S1 Pro pass by as well. But the fact of the matter is, the update is here and Ola is saying that all of their previous glitches are all but sorted. But are they sorted? Let's find out. Make sure you watch this video till the very end because we have a set of the Denali Amber LED DRL that one of you guys can win. Answer a simple question and there's your chance. One of the big updates that the scooter now has is the addition of an eco mode. Initially, the mode with the lowest performance and the maximum range was the normal mode. But now, the eco mode promises about 165 kilometers of range. Our friends at Zigwheels tested the eco mode and did not get the exact number, but still, the number that you see on the screen right now is still a very significant number. For me personally, the downside here is going to be the speed at which the eco mode sort of tops out, which is about 40 kilometers per hour. So, if you are on a commute where the traffic flow is nice and easy and everybody around you is doing about say 50 or even 45 kilometers per hour which is only 5 kilometers more than your top speed in the eco mode then you instantly become a hazard for everybody on the road. My preferred mode of riding on the Ola S1 Pro is obviously going to be the normal mode because it offers such a nice balance between range as well as performance. But eco mode does not sit well with me. Let's talk about cruise control, a feature mostly used in internal combustion engines on the highway for a variety of reasons because EVs don't function the same way ICE does. You're running down the battery at a faster rate. But what Ola has done is restricted the CC speed to 80 km per hour. What that does is not extract maximum performance and help the battery run down efficiently. Great if your commute involves a lot of the open highway, but I'm not sure how helpful this will be in the city. The navigation bit on the S1 Pro is pretty straightforward. Enter your destination and hit the start button. It looks much more animated than the simple setup on the Aether 450X and we did not face any lag issues whatsoever during our test runs. And because the screen has more real estate, the readouts are also a lot more clear. The next thing that I want to talk about is uh, the companion app. No? Okay, yeah. But through the app, what you can do essentially is lock and unlock the scooter and also open the boot. Now, all of this is great, but I as a rider would want a lot more information about my ride. Information that I can grasp and hopefully make the next ride better. Also, I think there are quite a few things missing on this app. For example, most of you all know that this can be ridden without a key uh, and for that all you need to do is enter a password. And for whatever reason your password gets leaked and your scooter gets stolen, there is no option for you as a owner to remotely shut it down. But I think Ola will work on this in the near future, I really hope they do and bring a iteration or a version of the app through which all of these things are possible. This is far from being perfect because we had major issues during our range test. We started riding it in the hyper mode with about 84 kilometers of range and finally finished the trip with 57 kilometers as our trip number. You know what the sad part is? We could ride it in hyper only for about 19 odd kilometers before the scooter switched to normal because of overheating issues and finally finish the last 20 kilometers in the eco mode. So obviously the software issues still persist. Also 
credit where it's due because this is a comfortable scooter ergonomically for my frame as well uh, the handlebars don't hit my knees when i'm taking a tight u turn uh, in terms of seat space seat comfort ride quality all of those boxes are checked really well by the ola s1 pro in fact when you open the trunk as well though it might not have the depth it still has the space to hold a lot of things so like we said in a previous comparo as well the hardware bit is really sorted but the software is where the problem lies also we've seen and heard reports on social media of how the scooter is reacted when the temperature has gone really high but now it is time for the monsoon what will happen when there is a heavy downpour what will happen when the scooter has to go back home after your city has been flooded all those questions will hopefully be answered in a later video but for now a lot of work needs to be done a lot of confidence needs to come from the brand and i have this thing about confidence confidence takes time to develop and time is the best medicine for the brand right now hopefully they take time and get back to us with a much better product thank you so much for watching this review of the ola s1 pro and now it is time for our contest question what is the name of the new mode that has been introduced as a part of the move os 2.0 update drop your answers in the comment section below and one lucky winner stands a chance to win a set of the denali led drl that can also double up as an indicator and obviously this is coming through the way of big bad bikes thank you so much for supporting us always time to answer that question my name is varun painter and i will see you later